Hello and welcome to the fifth day of the study of the book The Baha'i Faith and Introduction by Gloria Fezi. Today we are going to study the fourth session of part one, the history of the Baha'i Faith, the guardian of the cause. By the end of Abdul Baha's ministry, the Baha'i Faith had attracted a great number of followers from backgrounds as different as Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Zoroastrian, and Atheist. They came from various nations, races, and cultures of the world. As Baha'is, they now had to learn to work together as one people. In the lifetime of Abdul Baha, they had turned to him for guidance at every step, and he had taught them and watched over them like a loving father. Under his patient care, they had begun to lay down the foundations of the administrative institutions, the plan for which had been given by Baha'u'llah himself. Through these institutions to be established throughout the entire world, the followers of Baha'u'llah, wherever they lived, would be linked together and be able to work as one body for the promotion of the spiritual and social principles of their faith. But the Baha'is had just begun to get a glimpse of this unique worldwide administrative order which was so different from anything they had known before and which was to coordinate their activities and preserve their unity when Abdul Baha passed away. Many wondered how the members of this infant faith, coming from such diverse backgrounds, could continue to remain united after the magnetic personality of Abdul Baha was removed from their midst. But Baha'u'llah had promised his followers that his cause would not split into sects, that no matter what days and trials we, we, we say the new faith, it would grow in strength and unity until it had accomplished its mission in the world. The Baha'is of the East and West, bereaved by the passing of Abdul Baha, found in his will and testament the guidance they needed for the next stage of the development. In this important document, Abdul Baha had appointed his grandson Soki Effendi as guardian of the cause of Baha'u'llah and had asked the Baha'is to put their trust in him and offer him their undivided loyalty. During the 36 years of the guardian's ministry, the Baha'is of the world, working under his direction and in close collaboration with each other, established the administrative institutions throughout the planet on the foundation strong enough to enable them to work together in perfect harmony. Soki Effendi was related to both the Bab and Baha'u'llah. His mother was the daughter of Abdul Baha. His father was a close relative of the Bab. In his childhood, his devotion to Abdul Baha was very touching. And when he grew up, his greatest joy was in obedience to Abdul Baha. Though he had already decided to dedicate his whole life to the service of the cause, the contents of Abdul Baha's will came to him as a song. He was only 24 at the time and had not realized that he might one day be called upon to soldier such a tremendous responsibility. At first, overcome by the grief of Abdul Baha's sudden death at a time when he himself was studying away from the Holy Land, and second by the ex extraordinary task assigned to him in Abdul Baha's will and testament, he went away to be alone for some time. After a period of preparation, he came back ready to soldier his responsibilities as the guardian of the cause. From that day onwards, he did not spare himself in any way. Content with little food and rest, he worked every hour of the day and far into the night, attending to the many needs of the first growing world community. The detailed plans he gave for the progress of the faith in both the East and the West, the innumerable letters he answered, the volumes of translations he made from the writings of Bab, Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha, as well as the remarkable books he personally wrote, all remain as a lasting tribute to the colossal amount of dedicated work he accomplished. 
as a man, Sugi Effendi had a rare combination of outstanding qualities which set him apart from others and which inspired great love and admiration in all those who knew him. As guardian of the cause, he led the Baha'is through ordeals which often seemed insummerable, insummerable to victory after victory until the administrative order of their fate was firmly established throughout the world. The institutions through which they could combine their forces in the service of God and their followers and had been erected and the unity of the followers of Baha'u'llah ensued throughout the Baha'i dispensation. In his will and testament, Abdul Baha had assured the Baha'is that the guardian would be under God's special care and protection and that he would be guided to lead them in all their undertakings. The years of guardianship proved the significance of Abdul Baha's promise.